the last one here is, oh sorry, this is copper, not whatever the heck that is. It's the last thing. Yeah. On Friday, when he gave it on, and no, he mentioned it said how do himself got it in. Having what? How do himself got it in, just giving me an ass. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. All right. Uh, this is the next lesson, radioactive decay equation. Mm -hmm. Got that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. And um, so, this is uranium. We were talking about this uh, a little bit last time. It emits alpha and beta and gamma radiation. Um, but that's all it is. It's, um, you can find it in the earth. It's naturally occurring, I believe. Uranium, isn't it yeah. natural? Yeah. yeah, it's naturally occurring. You have uranium mines. I think there's some in Australia. Anyway, um, it's a radioactive rock. Uranium. Um, so we learned that radioactive isotopes like uranium 239 will decay. We know this. Um, the energy is released from the uranium via alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. All makes sense so far. Mm -hmm. But um, how can we detect this radiation? Ah, that's stupid now, to be honest. That's like saying, how can we measure this with a measurement device? Of course we can detect this with a detector. What detector and how? Come on. <coughs> how can we observe this with an observation? Uh, right. In fact, all of these forms of radiation are colourless. So we can't tell it's radioactive from its colour. So you can't see it. It's odourless. So you can't smell it. It's tasteless, so don't even think about doing this. Um, and it's chemically inert, which means it won't cause a chemical reaction. So uh, it's quite difficult to detect radiation because of these properties. I think these properties are worth writing down. That it is colorless, odorless, tasteless, and chemically inert. The four features of radioactive material that make it difficult to detect that it's colourless, it's odourless, it's tasteless, and it's chemically inert. Four bullet points. How long does it take to write four words? Colorless, odorless, tasteless, chemically inert. Five words. At three seconds a word, it should only be 15 seconds. It's been at least 30 seconds now. Yeah. You're writing too much, aren't you? You're writing everything, aren't you? I just want these four points. Colorless, odorless, tasteless, chemically inert. So it's very important we know how to detect radiation since it's so dangerous. Say again? No, no, this is what makes it difficult to detect. That's colorless, odorless, tasteless, and chemically inert. It's hard to figure out whether you do it Yeah, it's difficult to detect. And, um, yeah? So how can we detect it? We'll get to that. We'll get to that, don't worry. Um, so, First, we need to define some terms. Um, activity is the rate at which an unstable nuclei decay, or decays, I should say. That is, uh, disintegrations uh, are destroyed. So, just thinking about it like this, it's basically 
how many atoms of the material you lose per second. So it's uh, the units are, uh, or not units, but uh, I haven't said anything about the units yet, but it's how much is disintegrated, or in other words, uh, how much are destroyed. So it's the rate at which it decays uh, is destroyed. So if you lose a uranium atom per second, then the rate would be like one atom per second. Yeah. Well, you see, when something undergoes alpha and beta, like we saw last time, it can change. So the uranium could come become something like lead or whatever. So you've lost the uranium atom. So in some sense, it's been destroyed. Oh. Although it hasn't really been destroyed. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just been converted. Can you bring that back? Yes, you could bring it back. If yes, you could. If you put energy back into it, yeah. Uh, so it's not really destroyed, but lost Convert. per second, converted per second, destroyed per second. So the unit, um, the BQ, Bicro, is the SI unit for radioactivity. So no surprise here, you could probably guess what the definition of one BQ is. It is defined as the disintegration of one nucleus per second as I was talking about a moment ago. So if you lost one uh, atom of um, uranium per second, then it's one BQ. Two atoms per second would be two BQs and so on. Got that? Yeah. yeah. Definition sometimes asked on the exam for this question. Um, okay. So, in other words, when one nucleus is destroyed due to radioactive decay per second, we say it has an activity of 1 BQ. So, just uh, some definitions of letters. A represents activity, and the units, of course, are BQ. For example, 5 kilo BQ. N represents the number of atoms, e.g. N equals 10 to the 6 atoms. Uh, now, sometimes I and others are careless with the A. Or not careless, but it's only careless if you don't know what you're doing, but Really, the A should be a negative number because you are losing the atoms. So if you have one loss per second, it should really be minus one BQ. But often in the exam, they don't really care about the minus for this question. But really, if you're being very strict about it, um, your A should be negative. Minus if it's no, 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 no. I never said anything about the N. I said the A. Oh. So then if you A is equal to minus like? Yeah, so like here, there's... Well, no, it could be positive. Uh, positive would mean the opposite. Instead of being destroyed, it's gaining atoms, which doesn't make sense. So it's, it's not like it's impossible to be positive, but usually the way we use A when we talk about decay means it should be negative. So really that should be minus 5, yeah, if we're talking about decay. But just like with acceleration, we can drop the minus if we use, uh, if we use, no, if we... Uh, use the right word. Use right word, yeah. Mm, yeah, no, it's not, that should be R-I-G-H-T. Oh. The right oh, word. Yeah. <laughs> the right <laughs> word. Uh, so the activity rate for destructions of atoms is... So it's actually okay if I drop the minus if I say something like the activity rate for destructions is 5 kilo BQ. So just like with deceleration, I don't need to put in the minus if in my sentence I'm using deceleration. So likewise, if I use the word destruction, I can drop the minus. It's understood to be there. 
So that's the same as saying activity is minus 5 kb cubed. Now make, don't write all of this down, but make some notes. Um, calculating n is not too difficult. You learned how to do this in materials. So you have this thing called um, uh, Avogadro's number, number of moles, stuff like that. And in fact, you learned how to do this in chemistry too. So for example, now um, you should all know this from chemistry. I haven't really said this in physics properly, but 12 grams of carbon will have how many atoms of um, how many atoms of carbon are in 12 grams of carbon? No, no, I don't. No, there's not 12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon. No, 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 no. You don't need to look at anything. Yeah, but what's that called? And it's not this either. What's the one here? No, hang on, you're going to, Lorraine's going to kill you. If I tell her, I ask my students how many atoms of carbon are in 12 grams of carbon, she'll come in here and she'll no, no, destroy no. you. Hold on, hold on, right? No, no, this, this should not be a hold on thing. This should be done in one second. 12 minus 1. There's one atom of carbon in 12 grams of carbon. One more. One more. No. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it is one. I apologize. It is one Avogadro. You didn't know. No, you never said that. So then you I get said one, I said one, I said You said one, one what? One atom? No, you never said Avogadro. At least Tekken okay. gave me the number, which is what I was looking for. Thank you. Um. No, you never said Avogadro. You never said Avogadro. You never said Avogadro. You, yeah. you said it in a kind of desperate way, like Avogadro? Question mark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh mercy. Right. Um, is it not so? I thought it was twelve Avogadros and twelve grams. No, no, one one Avogadro and twelve grams. Twelve minus twelve? Twelve minus twelve is one. Twelve minus twelve is not one. Zero. <laughs> 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 anyway, it's twelve. It's one. Uh, twelve can twelve grams of carbon will have one Avogadro number of atoms. But I thought that was the, isn't that not the definition you've got in chemistry for Avogadro's number? We did end a lot. Oh yeah, indeed. Right. Um, you know the number. Oh no, you're not writing down Avogadro's number, are you? Are you? Yeah. No, do it, no. Right. This is yeah. how you can detect radiation. Where's the word detector on the screen? Nowhere. Um, this is how you can detect radiation. A Geiger Mueller counter. Maybe you want to write the name of it down. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not too expensive. I mean, about a yeah, about a about a. About a hundred euros, maybe. Hundred euros. This one is mini. Hmm. This is mini. Yeah, this would be for carrying around. You can compare it to the size of the plug. You see, it's not too big. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you got that? Yeah. And um, so look, I want to explain how this counter works. So what happens is. You have your radiation that comes in through this uh, special glass. Now what's special about this glass is very 
that it's very fragile, easy to break. This glass is strong enough to stop the air molecules getting in, but it's thin enough and light enough to let the radiation in. Okay? Now, um, also what you have here is a power supply. And if you notice, here's the plug, and it goes at the top, and then, oh sorry, that's the magnet, yeah. it goes at the top, and then the plus goes in the middle here. Wow. What do you get between those two? The negative on the top and the plus in the middle. No, no, what happens in between those two? Mm. No, come on. You have a, positive, a negative here and a positive here. It's a drag. No. You should know this because it was literally the last chapter we did. If you have a negative here, a positive here. Oh guys, this is terrible. Terrible. You got an electric field. No. Oh yeah? Yeah, oh yeah, of course. We did this in the last chapter. So when the radiation comes in, the atoms that are inside this glass that container. Um, for example, um, the alpha particle has a positive or negative charge, which is this positive, and the beta yeah. negative. So when the alpha and beta comes in here, it can free an electron from an atom, and what do you get when the electron is freed from the atom? What does the atom become from chemistry? What do you say? And it becomes free. Yeah, an electron is released from an atom, so what does the ion. Uh, it becomes an ion. Yeah. So the ion now has a charge. So for example, this ion here, if it lost an electron, what charge does it have? Positive charge. Yeah. And if there's a positive charge in an electric field, then it will move in the direction of the field. So here, let me see, the field is going up. Is it? Well, actually, this diagram, the cathode, you can't really see it here, but this cathode is, is actually all the way around. Like, um, the mm -hmm. negative is the outside and the positive is through the middle. So the field, is it going out or is it going in? Mm -hmm. Which way is it going? So the outside here is the negative place and the inside is the positive. So like it does. I just need in or out. I don't like the do you this is the this is the you know the cover thing is negative. For the third time the negative yes is on the outside and the positive is on the inside. So which way is the field going? To the inside or to the outside? Outside. It goes from positive to negative, doesn't it? But then it should go from like upward. Oh my goodness. It's a downward. Look. Oh. The plate on the outside is negative. And the inside piece here is positive. So the electric field goes from positive to negative. So it's going outwards, not inwards. I said upward. It could go in the uh, Did you you said anything? You said anything. I only got I said upward. Of, you said upwards. Yeah. That's not outwards. Upwards is wrong. It doesn't go upwards, it goes outwards. It's like because look for hard look. It can also go downwards and leftwards and rightwards. So we say it goes outwards. Outward doesn't mean from center out. Center. Yes. So it goes outwards. So the ion will, um, if it's um, positively charged, will go outwards. So this will change the current here. This is like an ammeter. Ammeter. Yeah. So, if you have more radiation, 
and you have more atoms becoming ions, and more ions in the electric field will cause a bigger beam on the ammeter here. And the only difference between this ammeter and a normal ammeter is it changes the current into number of uh, ions. So it doesn't give it as amps, it gives it as number of ions. You know, so you would probably know the sound of a counter here. Now, what gas is inside of it? Um, I can't remember what gas is inside of it. It's something, is it something like um, neon or something? I don't remember. Um, but there's some gas inside of it, and I think the gas is at a low pressure. Inside the atom? Oh yeah, these are atoms of a gas, but I don't remember what gas. I'll have to check. Anyways, I just want to play something for you here, but my sound isn't working properly. So. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just make sure I got volume. Right. The speakers are broken, but you might be able to hear it. It'll sound bad, though. So this is the sound the counter makes. You hear the sound before on TV or anything? Yeah. So each clicky sound is when an ion hits the um, outside and it causes the current to increase. Say again? uranium in Well, not just uranium, something radioactive. Yeah. No, that's caused by a different thing. By a different thing. Um, so anyway, this is the Geiger-Muller counter. This is how you can detect radiation. This glass is very sensitive. Uh, this, if it's dropped, it will break. It's very delicate. And uh, if it breaks, then that's it. It won't work because the gas that's in here is uh, released. So here we don't deal with numbers. Oh, we will. Just not yet. Just not yet. No, I mean with this device. Some of them can display it, and some of them just make a sound. Um, let me check here. I want to check what gas is in the inside. That's okay. I'll notice it when I type it. Right, anyways, while that's loading there. So, uh, we have some formulas here. Right, let me just... I think it's something... I think... No, that couldn't be KJ, could it? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> KJ, because you're going to like move your hand to right and it'll block it. Sit somewhere else. Sit somewhere else, KJ. KJ, sit somewhere else. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I was right, neon was one of the gases, but not the only gas. You can also use helium or argon. Okay? Helium, argon, or neon. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to know that, but I just wanted to check what gas goes inside of it. Okay. Uh, right. So this is like our key idea for the equations we're going to make that the activity is proportional to the number of atoms that means the more atoms you have the more activity you will have 
the activity and number of atoms are always decreasing in time. I shouldn't say pause. Therefore, A is less than zero. So, it's always decreasing number of atoms, so that's why the A is negative, as discussed earlier. So, mathematically, uh, this is our formula, that the activity is equal to minus lambda N. Where lambda is a positive constant known as the decay constant. And the minus sign is to indicate that the A is decreasing. I should say that the N is decreasing, actually. I'll fix that. Right, you'll need to write that down. Well, no, actually, I suppose the A and the N are both decreasing. But anyways... Okay, so this formula here is our first formula for this topic. The, um, um, activity is equal to minus some constant multiplied by n. So in other words, if you know the n, you can know the a. If you know the a, you can know the n. So have you got this formula? Yes? And, what's, and write down the name of this constant. Yep. Okay, continuing. So what are the units of lambda? We'll do that one together as a short question to get started on things. Well, the formula Well, actually, you can tell me here. What are the units of lambda? If I go back to the formula, what should the units of lambda be? Mm. What is it? What is it? Come on. Hang on, let me close this. The units for lambda? Mm. What are the units? Dude, you just arrived. <laughs> you be quiet. What's the units for uh, lambda? Come on. No. Uh, no, you can do better than that. Work it out. I'll give you 30 seconds. Write it down. Work out the units for lambda. Guys, don't look at me like that. No, no, no. Stop speaking and write it down and work it out for her. No. Oh, guys. 
terrible, absolutely terrible. What's the unit for activity? BQ. BQ, but what's a BQ? It's an atom per second. And what's the unit for N? It's atom. How many atoms do you have? So lambda is in per second. Hertz. Hertz. That's what I wanted to hear. Which I got from nobody. So the unit is per second. Which nobody said. And it's we did this type of stuff in semester one in the mechanics where we have to simplify the units. And you see, because you're not doing revision, you're forgetting how to do these. And your exam's next month. I suppose you started your revision last week like you told me you would. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Where did you start? Not this topic because you didn't get this. Oh, physics. You were doing What chapter in physics? Materials, okay. Why not something from semester one? Yes. Uh, but the, oh, never mind. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so in a radioactive sample, one mole of atoms uh, are destroyed uh, into alpha, beta, and gamma radiation in one second. So, what is the activity of this sample? Right, so if you have Um, the activity is my pen gone. Here it is. Oh, that's the weight. Well, actually, I'll let you try it. So what's happening here is one mole is destroyed, uh, decays into alpha, beta, and gamma radiation in one second. What is the activity? It's so, okay. I want it should, again. It should only take you thirty seconds. Uh, what's the activity here? So write it down. No, if they gave you all the, it's one mole per second. You don't need to write all of that no, two sentences really down. One mole of atoms is destroyed decays into alpha, beta, and gamma in one second. What is the activity at this moment? Do you have an answer? Oh, you're breaking my heart here. You're all asleep. Come on, wake up. No, it's not. Guys, 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 look at me. Look at me. Look at me. What is the definition of activity? Look at your notes. What's the definition? So it's disintegrations per second, destructions per second. Yes? How many did I say were destroyed in one second? So, how much, what's the activity here? One. No. One mole per second. One mole of atoms per second. The ma how many mo How many are destroyed per second? 
a mole. So you could write it like this. You could write it one mole of atoms per second. Yeah. So it's one mole of BQ. So that's 6.02 times, what is it, 10 to the 23 BQ. So that's the answer. Isn't it? Okay. Continuing? Yes, yes. Right, a radioactive sample has 10 to the 10 atoms present. If 1,000 atoms are destroyed per second, then what is the value of the decay constant? So uh, again, uh, do this one for me. I want to know what the lambda is. Got an answer? You got an answer? One times ten oh minus seven. Yeah, well what's the what's the formula that you used? Yeah, so then lambda equals minus a over m. So you you can or cannot put the minus in. Uh, some people don't bother putting the minus in, or they leave the minus on the other side, actually, I think. Um, so that is um, activity. It was <coughs> 1,000 atoms, and then originally there was 10 to the 10. So this comes out to be 10 to the minus 7. Um, now, if we want to convert that into something a little bit more manageable. So let me see. We'll do it in not micro. Can we do it in nano, maybe? I think nano might be big enough. Yeah. So that's 100 nano hertz. Nano per second. If you want. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. A radioactive sample. Huh. Oh yeah. Has 10 to 10 atoms present. If lambda equals 0 0.1 per second, that should be s to the minus 1, then what is the activity? So this time I want the activity. I give you the n of the lambda. That's barely worth doing. Um, so again, same formula. What's it going to be? Is there a number? Yeah. Nine. Ten to the nine. Yeah. Yeah. Minus ten to the nine. Yeah. That wasn't even worth doing. I'm going to delete it. Okay.
Right, and so here's one I want you to try. I want you to try and define activity but as a derivative. So look at your definition I gave you in words and try to remember try and write as a derivative. So for example, for example, remember that force is the rate of change of momentum. So as a derivative we can say force is dp dt. So I want you to try and do the same thing for um, activity, okay? I want you to try and define activity as a derivative. I'll give you half a minute. Alright, does anyone think they have a definition? D lambda over dn? Nope. Lambda is active. Uh, oh, D lambda? No, not this. Good try though, but not this. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anybody? What's the definition of activity? It is the rate of the richer we can say or the equal or distance. That was nearly a sentence. Try again. Actually the rate at which and say or multiply or distance. Yeah, so what's in the denominator? D Thank you. And in the numerator? Yeah, so what letter is that? Yeah. So what was so difficult about that? The NDT is the activity. Yes? So far so good. So you have here if you think about it you also have this form the A equals minus lambda N, don't you? If you put them together you get dn dt equals minus lambda n. Have you seen some problem like this before? Mm. Yeah, where have you seen this before? Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm really worried about your exams next month. Where have you seen this before? This should look familiar. Anybody? Anybody? Ordinary differential equation that you did in maths. But I don't make that face. Okay, no, no. I'll tell you exactly what page it's on as well. Page 42. Do you remember this lesson? No? Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Have a look at this. Do you remember this lesson, page 42? Yeah. Now you see you've forgotten about this. Yeah. So, we can use what we learned in our maths class that you forgot and um, how to solve this. Or does anyone remember the first step? Yeah. Yeah, bring the n down and the dt up. So you get 1 over n dn equals minus lambda dt. And then integrate, that's right. So this will be log n equals minus lambda t plus c. That's it. So n equals e power minus lambda t plus c. So then n equals ec e minus lambda t. 
But note that n equals n0 when t equals t0. So that means you get n0 equals ec, e0. So then we get n equals n0 e minus lambda t. So now what you've done is you've found a formula for how many uh, nuclei of the, uh, how many atoms you have left. This is the number of atoms. This here is the k constant. This here is the time. And this is what you start with. So if you know the decay constant and what you start with, then you can know how many atoms you have at whatever time. Mm So, and um, what was the unit for um, lambda? Perch. Yeah, per second, yeah? And what's the unit for t? Six. Second. So when you multiply them together, what is the unit here? No. No unit. So what's the unit here? Mm -hmm. No unit. So the unit for n is the same as n0, which makes sense. And then you realize, well, hang on a second. If I go back to this definition here, look, the one that you said at the start, activity is the rate of change of n. Then if I want a formula for activity, what do I need to do here? So look, activity is the rate of change of n. It's the derivative of n. So what do I need to do here to get the formula for A if I know this? Do I do derivative. <coughs> so what's the derivative here? Minus lambda. Oh no, come on, what, yeah, what is it? Minus lambda and <coughs> zero. E <coughs> minus <coughs> lambda t. But this here, if you remember from the formula A equals lambda n. So that means A0 will be lambda N0. So if you put that in here, you can get this formula. A equals, um, well actually the minus, I'm missing the minus here. A equals A0 E minus lambda T. So you get this formula for activity. Very, it's the same formula basically. Okay, got that written down? Yeah. So we have our exponential decay equations, which we just wrote down. N is N0 e minus lambda t, and A is A0 e minus lambda t. So this gives you the N and the A at any time, provided that you know the decay constant lambda, and the N0 and the A0. So it's useful then. These formulas should remind you of what formulas from what other chapter? We lost two times. No. We lost one. No. <laughs> we did no problems with exponentials in velocity and time. No, we had like V equal to V zero. Hold on. Yeah, thank you, yeah. No, I want to see. Tell me which formula in mechanics had an exponential in it, an E in it. Tell me, I'm waiting. Which? No. Tekken? Which formula did you say? RC. The lesson on RC circuits. In electricity. RC circuits. 
Do you remember RC circuits? Where you have the current and the voltage exponentially decreasing? I said that. You said mechanics. I didn't say mechanics, I said volt in a crumb. Seriously, I said B0 is equal to Yeah, but I want. Okay, but I didn't. But why do you pick the words which aren't the. <laughs> Just get the name of the chapter or C circuit. Don't give me the chapter. But that's a problem too. <laughs> if you don't know the chapter. Not the whole formula, but that. I had the idea. I don't think it was. Yeah, please. Right, okay. I think I had the something. Yeah, that's true. He had something. He had something, that's true, Karar. Right. <laughs> right, now, uh, let me see. So, yes. We will go through this. So, first, all I want you to write down first is this one sentence. Two sentences. Uh, two sentences, yes. Okay, did you write down the information at the start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first part... Yeah, where's my pen going? Part A. How many moles of iodine are there? Now, you don't even, you don't even need to write that down because the answer is shorter than the question. So what is the answer here? How many moles of iodine are there? One. Sigh, sigh. <laughs> Two. Why are there two? <laughs> Correct. Congratulations on your ability to divide two numbers. Right, initially, how many atoms are of iodine are there? Yeah, how many atoms of iodine are there? Yeah, so you have here n0 is 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, isn't it? 12.04 mm -hmm. times 10 to the 23. Yeah? See, actually, let me just check on my battery here. Oh, critical. Oh. Critical low. I probably will when it's like about to die. There's my notification going now. Was that a Yeah, it was, yeah. Seriously. No, it wasn't. Come on. <laughs> my notification came from outside <laughs> and sounded like a car alarm. <laughs> right. Okay, KJ. <laughs> right, so, um, let me see. Um, also, the question gives you the activity. 
So I want everybody to do part uh, 3 for me. Calculate the decay constant. So you have everything you need to know to get that now. You got an answer? Yeah, so let's have a calculation here. So which formula do we use? Yeah. A equals yeah. minus lambda n. So minus lambda equals A over, a over n. Uh, so what was the initial activity? 1.32 times 10 to the 20 and 2 times 6.12. So I got a small number, isn't it? Mm. 1.096 times 10 to the minus 4. Did you get that also? No. KJ, what did you get? No. You just have to divide two numbers. Is Avogadro 10 to the 23? No, this is, yeah. Did you get this? D. No, C. What answer did you get? <laughs> Guys, it's, isn't it just, <sighs> no, you said A. The, the answer for part B, yes, Oh, sorry, on the um, uh, lambda is a over n, yes, mm. and the n is the answer from part b, which is here, yes, and the a I give you in the question, one point three two times ten to twenty, isn't that it? Mm, yeah. So I got this number. Yeah, but what did you get? Why did you not get this number? What did you do wrong? I used normal and it's zero. Normal add? What do you mean? Zero. Okay, this is why. I'm yeah. a little confused. Like, yeah. and it's equal to a zero? The same? Yeah, like here, um, you can write a zero, n zero if you want. But basically, n is the same with n zero? No, well, yes, at the start. At the start? Yeah. N zero, n is n zero at the start. Initial. Can I continue? Yes. yes? Is that yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, how many atoms are after remain in after one hour? Okay, try and calculate that for me, please. Yep, you should. That is correct. So this is after one hour. Yeah, one one depends if you round it. So there's that many atoms left, or if you want 1.35 moles, if you wanted to give it as a, a mole. You just put in the numbers. 
we know this is our answer from part B, this is our answer from part C, and this is 3600. Okay, you got that? Part, next part um, is what is the activity after one hour? Okay, so try that. What's the activity after one hour? Okay, attacking. What did you get? Minus zero point seven three. Hmm. I don't know about that. Let's have a look here. So there's two ways to do it, but I think the easiest way to do it would be the activity after one hour is minus lambda times the number of atoms after one hour, which would be um, minus 1.096 times 10 to the minus 4 times 8.11 times 10 to the 23. Minus 8.89 times 10 to the 19 BQ. Is that very different to your answer, Tekken? What did you do differently? You should get the same answer. If you went with A equals A0 E minus lambda T, if you use that formula, what was the A at the start? Ah, uh, well then this is the problem. Yeah. I didn't think I got down from Minus nine. Ten to one. No. That's wrong. By doing it what way? Using the E formula? No, yeah. Yeah, well what did you put as A zero? A zero I put the minus lambda value into N multiplied. Right, so you went with uh minus um N zero lambda. No, for A e zero. Yeah, for A zero, yeah. you went with N zero lambda. Is that what you did? Yeah. Okay. So let's check. What was the N zero? What's the N at the start? 0.04. Yeah, 10 to the 23, isn't it? Okay, and what's the lambda? Minus. So 1.096. 1.096 times 10 to the minus, minus 4. 4. Times e to the power of minus 1.096 times 10 to the minus 4 times 3600. And I got exactly the same answer. Minus 8.89 times 10 to the 19. So it doesn't matter which formula you use, you get the right answer if you use the calculator correctly. Steven, in question D, told me N0 equal N at the start only. Yeah. And then after one hour, you use the same N. No, 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 no! This is N, and this is N0 at the start. Okay. So what I'm saying is N0 at the start multiplied by this, that would make the N one hour later. Okay. If you put the T0, what happens to this piece? If t is zero, this is gone. Zero. So you get n equals n zero when t is zero. If t is not zero, 
then the n will not equal n0. What will it equal? It will equal this. This is our formula. We have a formula for n at any time. It's n0, which is how much you have at the start, times e minus lambda t. So this is what makes it smaller. You start with n0, and then you multiply it by this. This will become smaller. That's the n at that time. Right. Um, how long until there are 100 grams of iodine left? Okay, try that. I went with this. I got the answer two ways. Firstly, and secondly, using two different formulas. What's wrong? I don't remember. But see, that's because you weren't here when I was talking about that minus. This is why you're having trouble with the minus. <laughs> we all had a little talk about the minus earlier, didn't we? You remember that? Yes. yes. KJ doesn't, because he was asleep. He was dreaming about the minus. <laughs> if only. If only it worked like that. Uh, keep, yeah, keep dreaming. That's not going to happen. So my hint for six is you could should first convert a hundred grams into atoms. Although there is another way to do it too, but this is one way to do it. you ask me how to convert that, Lorraine will destroy you. How, how many, um, what do you do to convert 100 grams into number of atoms? Yeah. Divided by... 100 divided by 100. Yeah, divided by 134 and then multiply it by Avogadro's number. Yeah, I know. Got an answer? Eight Give it to me a minute, son, if you have more than sixty of them.
Hmm, could be that. Sounds believable. I don't know. Um, I didn't. Okay, I didn't think it'd be that big. Let's have a look at it. Right. F. So, um, you want to know? Yeah. Well, okay. You have this formula, and. I had to look up. Um. N equals N zero E minus lambda T. N represents how many atoms there are, right? Yes. Um but you don't want you are dealing with mass, not number of atoms. So if you remember this from chemistry, if you have um the mass divided by the molar mass multiplied by Avogadro what does that give you? No, no, what is it? A number of atoms, isn't it? Yes. Uh, what letter do you use for Fahad, I've asked you already to look up stop messing with the calculator so what letter do you use in chemistry for mass? M and molar mass? M so in chemistry you would have a formula like this M over M or and here is N A is it? For Avogadro what symbol do you use? Okay but I just want to know what letter you use for Avogadro. Guys, what is that? No, you don't use A for Avogadro in chemistry, do you? I thought you use NA for Avogadro's number. Do you write it only in number form? That's fine, that's fine. So if you write only in number form, I have this formula. Mass divided by molar mass multiplied by Avogadro's number that's equal to number of atoms. What letter do you use for that? <coughs> N. Do you? Yeah. Well, I'll use N. Yeah, we use big N. Now, if I was to put this into my formula for N, I would get... Uh, now, I don't want to write this number all the time, so I'm just going to write as NA. So I get M N A over M or uh, and that should be M0 for the mass at the start uh, no sorry M uh, equals and if I do the same thing again but this time for N0 so instead of having the mass of um, uh, I'd have the mass so instead of having the mass after whatever time I'd have the mass at the start and the only difference here is there's a 0 on the end the only difference in the formula is there's a zero on the mass. Now the only reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to convert. Here I have M0, NA over M or E minus lambda T. Now what cancels on both sides? They cancel. So anyways, my point is I could actually use this formula. The mass yeah, equals mass zero e minus lambda t. How do you get mass zero? What do you mean? I use this formula. So there's, you, you can pair it off with this one. M zero over M or times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 equals M zero. This is... If this is the number of particles at the start, then this is the mass at the start. And if this is the number of particles at time t, then this is the mass at time t. Mm. It's a way to make me to avoid having to convert my 100 grams into atoms. Mm. So here is 100 grams. And how much do I have at the start? How many grams do I have? 134. No. 
268 grams e minus lambda t so the grams cancel so you got 100 over 268 equals e minus lambda t I can cancel the e with a log mm -hmm. so I get the time will be log 100 over 268 divided by minus lambda. What was the lambda? 1.096 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so let's see what I get. So I got a pretty big number. I think this is the same as yours, KJ. 8995. Mm -hmm. And you convert that into minutes, it's still actually pretty big, 149.9 minutes. And I'll convert it into hours. Yeah, it's two and a half hours. So that's how long until there is only 100 grams of iodine left. Right, the last part, seven. So part seven here is how long until the activity how long until the activity is one quarter the activity it was at the start? <coughs> Yes. Got an answer? Yeah. But I mean, the previous answer was in minutes. Divided by 60. This is 110 minutes. And divide by 60 again? 3.5. Seems better. Okay, actually, that's okay then. Let's have a look at this one. So, uh, we want to know. The question is, when will the activity equal one quarter of the activity at the start? So we have this formula to solve. 
but you realize um, this isn't too difficult because what can I cancel on both sides? Well, E A zero. So I get 0 0.25 equals E minus lambda T. How can I cancel the E with a log? So I get a log 0 0.25 over minus lambda is the T. So the T is uh, now KJ, what was the uh, lambda? 1.0965 minus 4. Yes. So this is 1, 2, 6, 4, 9 seconds. Or if you want, that's a tiny bit over 3.5, 3.51 hours. Mm -hmm. Got that written down? Yeah. Okay, now, um, let me just fix uh, a little typo in this before you s start it. I want you to start it now for just a couple of minutes. Um, What's that? Hmm? What's wrong? Starts with Yes, let me just close this and just, uh, this is home. yes, this is home, but I want you to, well, there might not be time to do much of it because it's 10.55, but uh, let me just re-save it so you can get the correct picture. Right, can I just close this screen? Yes. No, that's sunshine and happiness falling from the sky. Yeah, close that. Are you trying to install Kali Linux on a virtual machine on Windows? Or Windows on a virtual machine in Kali Linux? Kali Linux on a virtual machine in Windows? Yeah. Lol, that's so backwards. You don't do it that way around. You install Windows on a virtual machine in Kali Linux. Oh. It'll run much better that way. How do you do that? Do you still have your Windows CD? No. Then don't do that. Put Kali Linux on a USB key. Okay. Yeah, I that's know. what I did. I have a 32 gigabyte. I plug it into my laptop and I boot it up and it boots from the USB key. There's a tutorial online to do it. It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. It's better on a USB key. It's better on a USB because then you can take it to different computers. Mm. That's what I can do. It's a USB key. Something like that. Yeah. Right. What do you want to have to Well, I have some people still have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want like 30 videos. 30 videos. That's his religion. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Please take a snap of this or something. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Alright. Did you have you seen the way that the digital makeup the like download this file and they have all the passwords? It doesn't work, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, it doesn't work that way.